What's up today, you guys? April 13th. We are on our Bible in the year. And Bible in two years, actually. Last year, we did the whole Bible in one year. This year, we're doing the whole Bible in two years. We're on chapter 15, book of Leviticus. Cleansing of a house. Cleansing of the unclean. And our... Our homes, our bodies, our temples are our house. So how do we cleanse our bodies, our, this house, uh, for God? How, how do we do it? Cleansing of the unclean. When our house is unclean, we got to cleanse ourselves. Going to the confessional, you know, detoxing our bodies. This is a jasmine green tea right here. Some oatmeal. Some healthy stuff, you know. we got to feed healthy stuff to our minds, hearts, bodies. Because they are our holy houses, just like we are the holy house, we are the holy temple for God. And how do we do this? Is by reading his word, his truth, his testament of time. Cleansing of a house. Cleansing of the unclean that we are for God. By reading his word. Chapter 15, book of Leviticus. We'll start with prayer in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. God, you are our life and our salvation. In your name we pray, amen. Chapter 15. The Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. And say to them, When any man has a seminal discharge from his body, his discharge is unclean. And this shall be his uncleanliness in his discharge. Whether his body runs with its discharge or... His body has stopped from its discharge. It is his uncleanliness. Every bed on which he who has the discharge lies shall be unclean, and everything on which he sits shall be unclean. And any man who touches his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the morning, until the evening. And he who touches the body of him who has the, the discharge shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And if he who has the discharge spits on him who is clean, when he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And anything on which he rides who has the discharge shall be unclean. And whosoever touches anything that has been under him shall be unclean until the evening. And he who carries any of those things shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And anyone who touches him who has the discharge and has not washed his hands in water, he shall wash his hands. Uh, he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And the earthen vessel which he touched, who has the discharge, shall be broken, and every vessel of blood, or every every vessel of wood, we're confusing ourselves from the previous chapters of the blood offering, sin offering, sacrifice offering, the blood. This is a, um, to cleanse ourselves of this offering, of these sin offering, we have to cleanse our house, cleanse our holy bodies, as they are our spiritual houses, they are our spiritual temples for God. And we are unclean, but we have to go to the house of God. We have to cleanse with God, with Jesus Christ. And that's what this chapter is all about. All right. And the earthen vessel, which he touched who has the discharge, shall be broken. And every vessel of wood or of, the, or of brass shall be washed in water. And when he who has a discharge is cleansed of his discharge, then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing and wash his clothes and bathe his body in running water and shall be clean. And on the eighth day, he shall take two turtle doves or two young pigeons and bring them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and to them, uh, to the congregation and give them to the priests uh, and give them to the priest. And the priest shall offer them the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord for his discharge. And if any man has an omission of semen, then he shall bathe 
all his body in water and be unclean until the evening. And every garment or bed on which the semen has fallen shall be washed with water and be unclean until the evening. If a woman also lie with a man having an emission of semen, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening. And if a woman has a discharge of blood and her discharge is of, in her body, she shall be put apart for seven days in her menstruation. And whosoever touches her shall be unclean until the evening. And everything upon which she lies during her menstruous, menstruous discharge shall be unclean, and everything also that she sits upon shall be unclean. And whosoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And whosoever touches anything that she sits upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And if it be on the bed or on anything on which she sits, then uh, which she sits when he touches it, he shall be unclean until the evening. And if any man lies with her, and some of her menstruous discharge falls on him, he shall be unclean for seven days, and every bed on which he lies shall be unclean. And if a man, or and if a woman, has a menstruous discharge of blood for many days, not at the time of her menstruation, or if she has a menstruous discharge beyond the time of her menstruation, all the days of her uh, all the days of the discharge of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her menstruation. She shall be unclean. Every bed on which she lies all the days of her discharge shall be to her as the bed of her menstruation. And everything upon which she sits shall be unclean as the uncleanliness of her menstruation. And whosoever touches those things shall be unclean and, and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. But if she is cleansed of her discharge, then she shall number for herself seven days, and after that she shall be clean. And on the eighth day she shall take to herself two turtle doves or two young pigeons and bring them to the priest in, to the priest to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the priest shall offer them and the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her before the Lord for the discharge of her uncleanliness. Thus shall you admonish the children of Israel concerning their uncleanliness, that they may not die in their uncleanliness, and that they may not defile my tabernacle that is among them. This law shall be for him who has a discharge, and for him who has an omission of semen, and is defiled therewith. And for her who has monthly course, and for him who has a discharge, male or female, and for the man who lies with a woman who is unclean. Chapter 16, we'll begin that one tomorrow, the scapegoat. And with that, we'll close with a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. God, thank you for bringing us this book of Leviticus into our lives. In your name we pray, Amen. Peace. See you guys tomorrow. God bless. Eat some nice oatmeal and tea in the mornings for me, you guys. God bless. See you guys at church tomorrow, Sunday.